today on Truths That Transform. More important than economics, more important even than religious freedom, is the question of life itself. The whole mission of Love Life is to unite and mobilize the church to create a culture of love and life that would result to an end to abortion and the orphan crisis. of D. James Kennedy Ministries, where we are standing for truth and defending your freedom. In 1973, the Supreme Court manufactured a so-called right to abortion that nobody had seen in the Constitution for its first 180 plus years. That decision opened the door to 63 million deaths of human babies at the hands of abortionists. But after decades of legal battles, the Supreme Court has finally overruled Roe and its related decisions. Writing for the court, Justice Samuel Alito said, Roe was egregiously wrong and deeply damaging. But the wailing and gnashing of teeth we saw from protesters in the wake of this recent decision shows how deeply the culture of death has embedded itself. On today's program, you'll discover the basis on which the value of human life rests. And you'll hear from one of America's leading Christian voices, Dr. Albert Muller. And as we begin, what happens now that the issue of abortion is back in the hands of the state? The Church of Jesus Christ has been at the forefront of not only protecting human life, but nurturing babies and helping mothers. There is now a golden opportunity to continue and expand that work. And as you're about to see, for some children, this work is literally a matter of life and death. Our very own Dr. Jerry Newcomb brings us this story. At the Supreme Court today, an historic upheaval. In a sweeping ruling that overturned a half a century of precedence, five justices ended the right of American women to choose abortion under the Constitution. It was major news when the Supreme Court vacated its 1973 ruling of Roe v. Wade, which effectively gave America abortion on demand. Abortion is stripped of its special constitutional status, because there's no other medical procedure that has constitutional status, and put it back in the hands of the people. So instead of having to convince nine justices on the Supreme Court we say to the other side, and we say to our side, our job is to convince the 330 plus million people of, of, of America, and that's where the government power belongs. Anyone who's in public office governs only with the consent of the government. Well, we can now legislate on this issue where it was legislated before 1973 at the state level. And fortunately, or, you know, fortunately there will be states that will have very radical abortion laws that are very similar to Roe versus Wade, in some cases maybe even worse. Uh, New York State, for example, is worse. Uh, and there'll be other states like Louisiana and, and uh, you know, Utah. I can go through a whole bunch of states that will not allow abortion at all. Texas, for example. And so it'll be a hot spot, but look, that's okay. Some states like New York, New Mexico, and California want to become major abortion providing states. There's even a push now for California to put abortion rights in writing in their state constitution. But critics would note that every abortion still stops a beating heart. Well, we have to realize that when it comes to abortion, we are talking about the actual killing of people. So I say it's not just about beliefs, it's about bloodshed. It's not just about viewpoints, it's about victims. We are actually trying to stop the killing of human beings, the smallest human beings in our midst. Well, I have a question. In a nation of 345,000 churches, in a nation of more than a half million ordained clergy, in an America where 100 million adults profess to be Christians, how could that be 
that in such a place we're aborting 3,000 babies a day roughly, much with federal subsidy. How could it be since 1973 that we have killed nearly 63 million human beings made in the image of God? Meanwhile, apart from politics and long before Roe was overturned, Christian people from various denominations have been working hard to provide loving alternatives to abortion. They've done this for decades and will continue to do so that much more. I think the, the fact that over the last 30 years we've seen an explosion of, of ministries out there who are meeting the needs of women who have unplanned pregnancies uh, and, and so many of those women are choosing life. How can we as the people of God stay silent with the atrocity of abortion and still want to pursue justice? It's a Saturday morning in South Florida and Pastor Rod Pacienza and other ministers and lay church leaders are out for a prayer walk as part of the ministry called Love Life. The whole mission of Love Life is to unite and mobilize the church to create a culture of love and life that would result to an end to abortion and the orphan crisis. We believe that God has called the church to shape the culture, he called us to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world, the city set upon a hill, he called the church to be the pillar and the foundation of truth. Love Life is a ministry that is all about activating the church. In other words, the church is the one who has the resources to solve the, the abortion problem, the orphan, orphan crisis, but often it's not spoken about from the pulpit. We help churches to find their voice, but also to find their role. Well, here we stand today in front of Astro Women's Center, which is a, an abortion business that's been here for 19 years. And every Saturday, 40 Saturdays in a row, we lead the local church on a one-hour mission trip in their city. We bring them out to do three things, to pray, to walk, and to sing. It's not a protest. It's not a picket. It's not a march of any kind. We pray, we walk, and we sing, leading and mobilizing the local church to actually be the hands and feet of Jesus in the world. One couple that is involved in love life are Mark and Holly Douglas, members of Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church. Mark and Holly, there are a lot of things as believers in Jesus Christ that we can give our lives to. You have given your lives to fighting for the unborn in our region. Why? Yeah, um, I mean, at the end of the day, we just feel like we, we were Christians, we we're followers of Christ in Germ Nazi Germany, 1943, what would be our responsibility? So when we see lives being lost, the baby in the womb, it's our responsibility to do something. That's something we say, oh, everyone can do something. It may not be serving in the capacity that we are, but whether it's giving up your time, your talent, your treasure, we can all do something to see an end to abortion and support these families. Holly, explain a little bit about Love Life in particular. What is so unique about the mission and the vision of Love Life and what you're doing in South Florida? So what we love about Love Life that's really stood out to us and made us say yes to this mission was that it's calling the church, it's calling pastors to speak on life from a biblical perspective, and then it's a call to action. So it's the vehicle for the church to go out on a short missions trip and go into their city and bring the hope of the gospel and the help of the local church to those that are hurting. And their ultimate goal is to save lives, and such was the case of Baby Serenity a little girl saved from the abortionist in March, 2021. To Serenity's mother, Tatiana, news of her upcoming baby was unwelcome at first. It was kind of like a big surprise when she came. So I was like, oh, I don't know what to do. And then my youngest child was under the age of like one and two at the time. So I was like having two small babies, it was a little too much. So I kind of went and scheduled the abortion. Tatiana's mom, who had qualms about the abortion, nonetheless had driven Tatiana to the clinic. And outside the clinic were pro-life volunteers praying, including Holly. And we were praying and Tatiana drove up and she was visibly pregnant. And so one of the pastors prayed, please God, no. My mom went outside and that's when she met um, Miss Holly and Pastor Carl and them. And they kind of talked to her and told me like, hey, don't do this. We spoke to her mother who brought her to the clinic and explained to her what we do and that we're here to help her carry her baby through the pregnancy and beyond. And so we encouraged her to go inside, get her daughter Tatiana, and she did. I walked outside the clinic and I did not get the abortion. 
Included in the Love Life Ministry is a mentoring program for the mothers who choose life for their babies. Holly Douglas is now a mentor to Tatiana. Since I met her, she always been there. She's been a call away. If I need anything, she's always there. She has my back and as well as she says serenity, she helped me with my other two daughters too. The beautiful role of the mentor is you agree to walk with mom for one year through her pregnancy and one year after. In the mentoring process, Holly Douglas encouraged Tatiana and Xavier to get married to provide a more stable commitment for their family, and they did. Today, Baby Serenity is a living reminder of how the church can make a difference in trying to foster a culture of life. I'm glad that I chose life to save her. She's precious, she's <laughs> nice, she's a goofy baby, and she brought me so much life. <laughs> We're blessed for having her and for Miss Holly and the church and Mark for being there for us. We minister now to over 2,600 moms that have made the choice for life at the abortion clinic in the last five years. These are people that showed up for scheduled abortions. They didn't think about it. They showed up for a scheduled abortion and they made the choice for life. And over 90% of those moms would tell you that if the father of the child had simply supported them, then they never even would have thought about having the abortion. So it's time for men to rise up and to take our proper place of responsibility to protect women and to protect children. What we're saying is protect the unborn. Why? Because they are verifiably human. The evidence that they are human is no less than the evidence that you and I are human. From the Kennedy Collection Library, we'd like you to have A Nation Worth Fighting For by Dr. D. James Kennedy. Is this nation worth fighting for? Is it worth my dying for? We'll send you this gift size hardcover book at no cost or obligation to you. Just call or write to us today asking for the book A Nation Worth Fighting For to get this valuable and inspiring resource for yourself. I'm so thankful for people like my friends at Love Life South Florida who help and mentor women with unexpected pregnancies like Tatiana because our culture has been lying to us. Former President Obama once characterized unexpected pregnancy as being punished with a baby. And our current Vice President gave an interview objecting to the overturning of Roe in which she indicated that young men's life choices would be limited if they had to support their own children. This cold utilitarian view makes unborn babies less than human to be sacrificed for our convenience or our comfort. Dr. D. James Kennedy exposes the falsehood of this idea in his message, The Sanctity of Life. Today I would like to discuss rationally with you what is probably the most important single moral issue of our time, the matter of abortion. It has been called by numerous writers the American Holocaust. It deals with a matter of vast importance. It deals with the matter of life and death. The Declaration of Independence says that we hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal and are endowed by their creator with certain inalienable rights. And among these are life. Before liberty, the pursuit of happiness, more important than economics, more important even than religious freedom, is the question of life itself. If we are deprived of life, then obviously all of our other rights are gone as well. Since the famous Roe versus Wade decision of 1973, more Americans have, have died through abortion than have died in all of the wars that have been fought in the history of America. A startling fact. And yet it goes on day after day after day, obviously it is a, a problem of tremendous dimensions. 
What kind of a problem is it? Is it a political problem? Well, it obviously has a political aspect to it, but it is basically a moral problem, an ethical problem, a spiritual problem, a biblical problem. There are well over 100 texts in the Bible that deal with the unborn and with the subject. And therefore, it is a subject about which the Bible has much to say. But all too often, we have been silent, even as many were silent in Germany when the great atrocities were taking place there. But I believe that we must discuss the issue. Who are the people that are involved? There are some who say that it is merely a woman's issue. Well, I want you to know that I have great sympathy and empathy for a woman who, especially a woman who is out of wedlock, who finds herself with a, an illegitimate child that she is carrying. And certainly, I feel, as many do, empathetically toward her and am concerned for her plight, so much so that we have started a home here at the church, as many other Christian churches have done, to try to provide positive, viable alternatives to the matter of abortion, where they can be cared for and provided for. But it's not merely a woman's issue. There are others that are, that are concerned as well, including, for example, the husband. That uh, newly created life is as much the husband's as it is the wife's. In fact, historically, it is interesting to note that when the Roman Empire uh, did away with laws which allowed abortion, they did it not because of the woman or the harm that uh, abortions were doing to women, and indeed they do do a great deal of harm to women, vastly more than most people are made aware of in this country. The list of medical problems as well as psychological problems is extremely long, but they did it because the husband was being defrauded of his progeny, and that was the reason for the laws. The Bible speaks very strongly about hands that shed innocent blood and God's great displeasure with the shedding of innocent blood. And there's God himself. These are creatures made in his image and he is greatly concerned about them. There are over 100 biblical texts that make it very clear who they are. Listen to the personal pronouns. Thou didst clothe me with skin and flesh clothe what? It? Me with skin and flesh, and knit me together with bones and sinews. The Lord hath made you, who formed you from the womb, and will help you. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, I was brought forth, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Or of Jeremiah, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you, and before you were born, I consecrated you consecrated you. We don't consecrate an appendix, a tumor, but a person. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb. The babe in my womb, said Elizabeth, leaped for joy. It's interesting. You never hear a woman say that the fetus inside her leaped with joy. It's always the babe. And the Greek word is brephos. The babe in the womb is the brephos. And what does that mean? It's the same term that was used to describe Jesus, the babe, lying in a manger, clothed in swaddling clothes. My friends, the time has come, I believe, that Christians need to stand up. They need to become active. They need to fight this gross moral evil in our time. We have seen that there is not a rational argument that can be presented for this flood of abortions, which has launched this nation out in a sea of blood. God says, woe unto the land that sheddeth innocent blood. We are perhaps going to bring down upon us the very wrath of God. 
I am certain, I am as certain as I am that I'm standing here now, that this hideous blot on the escutcheon of mankind will be wiped away. God grant that soon this evil will pass from our land. May it be. Hello, I'm Jennifer Kennedy Cassidy. My father, Dr. D. James Kennedy, spent the final 34 years of his life praying and battling through persuasion and biblical reasoning to see Roe v. Wade overturned. How overjoyed he would be to see this day. But he also understood that overturning Roe was only part of the battle. That's why we wanna help you think and plan for the days ahead. This is a pivotal time in the battle for the sanctity of human life. And there's a brand new resource that we wanna get into the hands of every Christian and through the doors of every church. It's the booklet, Thinking Clearly After Roe, a five-part strategy moving forward by John Stenberger. And we'll send it to you as our thanks for your generous donation to help this ministry continue broadcasting the truth about the sanctity of life and so many other biblical issues. John Stenberger is the president of the Florida Family Policy Council. And he says that perhaps the most important part of preparing for a post roe world is creating and casting a vision for an abortion-free society, especially for elected officials and other leaders. He shows how we can do that in this compelling booklet, Thinking Clearly After Rome, a five-part strategy moving forward, which we'll send you as our thanks for your generous donation. And if you're able to give a gift of $40 or more, we'll send you the booklet plus the classic DVD of Christian Manifesto from Francis Schaeffer. Schaefer was one of the most thoughtful, powerful, evangelical voices of the 20th century. And in 1982, he came to Coral Ridge Presbyterian Church at my father's invitation to preach this message. It is a resounding call to spiritual arms in the battle for the sanctity of human life and an expert diagnosis of how secularism is killing our nation. This was one of Francis Schaefer's last messages before he died two years later. It is as powerful and as applicable as the day it was preached in 1982. And it is unusually insightful and prophetic as well. With Roe finally having been overturned, these are essential resources for moving forward. Please contact us right away with your generous donation and we'll send you the booklet from John Stenberger, Thinking Clearly After Roe, a five-part strategy moving forward which you'll want to read for yourself and also share with your pastor. And the booklet plus the DVD of Francis Schaeffer's classic message, A Christian Manifesto, as our thanks for your gift of $40 or more. And as you give, you are helping this ministry to expose the truth on issues like critical race theory, the left invading our churches, indoctrination in our public schools, and much more. Simply write to us at D. James Kennedy Ministries, Box 11154, Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33339, or call toll-free 877-962-7677, or go online to djkm.org. One of the most thoughtful and respected voices in the evangelical world is that of Dr. Albert Moeller, president of the Southern Baptist Theological Seminary in Louisville, Kentucky. Dr. Moeller grew up in South Florida and was mentored by Dr. Kennedy as a young man. In the days leading up to the Dobbs decision, I had a chance to sit down and talk with him about the overturning of Roe v. Wade. Here's a portion of that conversation. Dr. Muller, what does a post-Roe society look like? I think it's going to look very chaotic for a long time. Uh, for instance, uh, you know, just in the months leading up to the Dunn's decision, Americans are going to be able to say, well, you had a state like Oklahoma that legislatively banned all abortions. You can look at states, and, uh, you know, it's, it's very much a matter of red states and blue states. It's not absolute in the overlay, but it's, it's the closest thing to it. And uh, you're going to see states like uh, Illinois, California, uh, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, uh, that, that are moving in the most liberal directions possible. And so it's like we're going to be in two Americas on the abortion issue. And uh, look, we have to watch. Several things are going to happen. N number one, 
uh, uh, Democrats in the in the Congress will seek, as we've already seen, to legislate Roe. But even even when they did that, the, the Schumer Pelosi bill was even more radical than Roe. Uh, and and then state by state, it's going to be an enormous battle. And it's because of, you know the logic of worldview works its way through, and so the logic of the pro life position works through thus Oklahoma. The logic of the pro-abortion argument, it, it works its way through, thus New York, California, where frankly they almost pay for any abortion and, and are actually talking about paying for abortions from people out of state. So this is going to be a monumental task. Dr. Muller, we've heard people inside the church say, yes, I'm pro-life, but we can't really focus on abortion. There's so many other issues we need to focus on. But why is a focus on, uh, on abortion so foundational to having a biblical worldview for all of human life? You know, I'll simply go back to where Francis Schaeffer, uh, you know, made the point so clearly right after Roe v. Wade when he said, we don't know who a human being is. Then uh, who do we know who actually deserves standing to have rights? Uh, if you can deny the right of the unborn, you can deny the right to life of the aged, the, of the infirm. And of course, the 20th century showed that even worse uh, can happen with millions of deaths. And so, you, you know, it, it, there is no more basic question than who is a human being and who deserves to be uh, a life protected, preserved, a life that possesses dignity and sanctity. And so you can say, yes, there are other issues, but that's sort of like saying, you know, we'll argue about tax policy and whether people should live. And uh, like there's an equivalence. And we, we know tax policy is important. But we're going to have to get to that after we determine uh, that every single human life is worthy of protection. Dr. Mueller, thank you so much for your time, for your leadership, and your important voice in this cultural moment. Rob, thankful for you. Honored to be with you today. As Dr. Mueller points out, the central question remains, what kind of life is worth protecting? And it's important to remember what the Supreme Court actually did here. They didn't ban abortion or rule on the nature of human life. They simply ruled that abortion is not a constitutional right and sent the issue back to the states. That's why the work of Christians to persuade our fellow citizens of the supreme value and dignity of every human life is more important than ever. To take advantage of all of our resources that we have to offer, make sure to connect with us on Twitter and Facebook just search for D. James Kennedy Ministries and search your smartphone's app store to get our D. James Kennedy Ministries app, which features all of our programs, plus a great library of messages from Dr. Kennedy. We're standing for truth and defending your freedom. I'm Pastor Rob Pacienza. Thank you for being with us. And here's a look at the next Truths That Transform. I realized that my surgery hadn't made me a man. And it was confusing because it had made me legally male. You know, and I looked like a male and everybody perceived me as male. But I knew the truth inside. That's next week. This has been a production of D. James Kennedy Ministries.